Um, correct. We are recording, we're sharing, we're good. I'd like to call to order the Board of Education Rebuilding School Committee for September 17, 2020. Suzanne Arthur? Todd Ireland. Here. Scott Powers. Present. Angela Reagan. Yes. Teresa Wallace. Yes. We have a quorum. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two, um, approve the agenda or anything to the agenda. Um, we have uh, an addendum that uh, you all should have in front of you. And then we also, um, I also would request that on personnel 3D under substitute custodian, we add the name Tammy Crum. That was missed when creating the agenda. Uh, Scott Powers. Yeah. Teresa Wallace. Yes. Suzanne Arthur. Yes. Angela Reagan. Yes. Todd Ireland. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Item number three, the superintendent's report. Uh, report and updates on the K-5 virtual learning on Beverly Walton and Jacob George. Okay. There's going to be a presentation. So, board, if you want to come back out and sit at the um, sit at the table so you can see that. Would you like this on or off? Um, I'll use the microphone down here. You can turn that one off. I'm going to move my mic and stand out in front here. And so, how many on YouTube? It is live. It says it is. That guy was going to look to make sure. That we good, Thomas? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things we want to share with you before giving you an opportunity to ask questions, provide input this evening, is to give you an update on where we are, what's going on with this, um, and provide you with uh, what the district is doing to resolve these issues. So this is Bill Walken, our curriculum coordinator. Jacob George is our special ed supervisor, but he's not um, able to attend this evening. So we're just going to walk through and kind of go back and forth. If you could, wait till we get to the end, and then there'll be some opportunities for you to ask us some questions or provide a little bit of input on that. Um, this may be a little bit lengthy. I'm just going to prepare you up front um, because we want to we want to um, accurately tell you what's going on and what our response is to that, and then provide you with a little bit of some looks at a few things that we are uh, considering in terms of a shift. Okay, so I'm going to start with. Um, Okay. Yeah. okay, so just to give you how did we get here and give you some information about what's going on. Um, we participated in a Green County Collaborative. So when we were preparing to get school open, the ESC says we will take the virtual learning platform, we'll do the research on this, and as a county, um, over half the county opted into that collaborative. And so the, the platform, Lincoln Learning for K-5, was selected by them. Um, I will tell you up front right now, we trusted the Educational Service Center to do that. We did not vet the program ourselves because um, that's what we use the ESC for, um, quite honestly. I'm going to own that up front with you right now. That's why we have an ESC. That's the purpose they serve for us. Um, the platform is not been great. If you know it, we know. And I'm going to admit this up front to you right now. We're going to start with, uh, with that frame of mind. Um, 
The workbooks have not been aligned once they told us that we've had workbooks. We recognize that they're not always aligned to the work that's on the screen. Um, we've talked to Lincoln Learning about that. There are workbooks that actually would align, are back ordered, and they can't print them and won't be here for a while. So they sent us the links. They said, print these. We've been printing nonstop for the last week in our office. There are stacks everywhere. Um, and within about a day, we hear from you, these things aren't here. Um, we were told that was the solution. It would put paper, pencil in your hands. So we listened to that and printed those. Um, unfortunately, they updated their online curriculum and not updated their print materials that they sent to us. Um, it is extremely difficult for our case managers in this platform um, to log in and see the student work. And so there is missing feedback on assignments. We know that. We have problems getting our people um, access to do so. And, um, and so that's an issue that we, we have on our end. And the other thing that quickly became um, noticeable for us is that the science and the social studies were not aligned to Ohio standards. They're aligned to the national standards, not the Ohio standards. That's a big problem. I get it, okay? We didn't know that up front. Um, oh yeah, that was something we should have told you type of thing. And so that's why we pushed the pause button on science and social studies. We have a list of how to work back and forth and take what they have and make it Ohio. And, um, but we haven't restarted science and social studies yet because it doesn't align. Um, that's one of the problems with the software that we were not aware of. So we have reduced to just math and English um, for the first 12 days. Um, and, and that's uh, because of those alignment issues. We requested, so here's what we did to respond. I called them on the Monday. So we told you guys on Thursday, stop doing this. Take two days, let us get some answers. I arranged a phone call for Monday morning, had a very, very good phone call. We were willing to pay for the Lincoln Learning teachers to come online and to help teach. We had a quote for it. I said, we want to do it. They said, we can do that. And by the end of the day, they told me they couldn't. Um, and so, that um, was a problem. They don't have teachers that they can give to us now. Um, they're overwhelmed with the people that they have. Um, we printed the copies uh, late because they were sent to us late. We hosted a parent meeting. Um, I participated in that. There were questions that were answered. We, we really thought that we could help with that. But, but unfortunately, what I heard in a lot of those things is our major problems with Lincoln Learning aren't going to change. They gave us answers, but our major problems are not going to change. Their programmatic problems, their issues um, reflected of that. So we did a parent survey to try to get a scope. We heard from 20 to 25, 30 people. And that will call or email and we respond and try to support that. Um, but I didn't know the scope of 165 kids using this. Is it 25 people having a problem or 165 people having a problem? I didn't know. So the parent survey, we got um, a decent amount of responses back. We can go to the next slide. Um, and so the question we were trying to figure out is just very simply, is this working for you or not? 44% um, uh, in there said, this isn't working, it's not good at all. 50% um, said it's not great, but we're plugging, plugging along. And um, about 5% said this works great and fine. Um, that's not good numbers. Not good for us, not good for you. Okay, next slide. This is this is messy, but we have a really good breakdown of information, and I'll go over it in a second. Um, the light blue bar is people rank that as their number one concern. It showed up on this chart as light blue. So the number one concern is on the far right hand side, will be behind when they return in the, in the at winter or at the end of the year, or I'm concerned that what we're covering doesn't align with what Green is covering. Those are number one concern for parents. Um, the second most uh, common concern was that the content's not age appropriate. It goes back to that alignment issue. Um, or my kindergartner's doing three breaks of the government on the first day of school. That's not, that's not okay. I'm here to tell you that the program has flaws that we didn't know ahead of time, and that's not okay with you, and it's not okay with us. Okay. Um, then, you know, there are other things that are in here, the lack of paper pencil or the paper pencil doesn't match up and, um, or I'm knowing how to submit things. Um, 
in the second, you know, third most consistent user, user platform is not very intuitive. It's not easy to use. So we, we asked these questions. We got these results. This was consistent with what we've been hearing throughout. We tried to get an idea of what was the most common problem. Um, and then we go to the next slide. So this is um, the question that really kind of drove us um, to a, a decision point. Um, if you're given the opportunity to switch, would you do so? 37% um, said yes without any hesitation. We had 124 students represented in the survey. And I'm not gonna give you the raw numbers. We had 94 parents that represented 124 students. So some multiple kids in there, obviously. Um, 124 kids of the 165. So we don't know how the other 40 feel, but they didn't fill out the survey. Um, so 37% said I would switch about any hesitation. Um, that's consistent with what we saw in the other place. 9% um, said no, this is working for my child and making progress. That accounted for nine students. And we counted up the numbers. I could go and see who that was. There was nine students that said, this is working for me. I want to switch. Um, the other one's not sure, depending on what the platform looks like, 33%. And yes, but only at the work I do. So overwhelmingly, it was, we want to switch. This isn't working. What I want to tell you is we hear you. Okay? I told you that from the beginning, and I, and I worked. I can promise you that I don't sleep much in the last week and a half. I'm working. I vetted four other programs in the last week. What we found two Fridays ago, I sat down with Beaver Creek and we went through a um, demonstration on another program that came highly recommended. The uh, Bellbrook Institute. We went through that demonstration, spent about three or four hours one afternoon. I felt very confident about what it was. I woke up on Saturday morning and I looked, was looking through Twitter and the Columbus Dispatch had an article and Westerville schools and Upper Arlington schools were dumping that program because they were having the exact same problems we're having with ours. So, so we, what we've come to grips with is this. There is no great one single spot program out there for, kid, for kindergarten through fifth grade. There is not a good one stop shop that we feel comfortable switching to. Um, so so we, we spent the last week, four days, five days, um, coming up with a solution. I want to talk to you about that solution. I want to make you aware of what that is this evening. Um, the wheels are in motion for us. We have POs in effect, which is a purchase order, which means we're purchasing it. Um, we're rolling. We don't have the flesh to show you all the details tonight because we're creating this thing in five days, but we're using resources that we've used before in the past and what we're using in our buildings. Okay? So here's what I'd like to show you, and I'm going to give, um, I'm going to talk, and I'm going to let Bev kind of talk through our plan. Um, will my student be behind when they return because this doesn't actually need to be pacing? What I can tell you is there is not a single program on the market that's going to match exactly what we do in the building in terms of pacing. Unless we put all of our kids on a computer with a Greenview staff member, um, and they do the exact same thing. We don't have available Greenview staff members for that. Um, our class sizes are such that we didn't and we didn't have people that we were able to pull out. Several other schools in the county had like 10 to 15 people that had medical conditions. They weren't able to teach this year. And so they're teaching from home and using that sort of model. Um, we didn't have any of those uh, situations. And so um, we have, that's not going to be an option for us right now. But there is no perfect plan that's going to perfectly match. But what we have done is try to come up with a plan. Our goal was to provide an adaptive program. So what I mean by adaptive is this. It, it gauges where your kid is and it adjusts to that. And so if your child is on an IEP, um, if, if your child struggles and has deficiencies in certain areas, if your child is somehow behind and maybe just a certain topic, we want a program that's going to find that option, work on it, and bring them up to pace. Um, it will individualize their instruction. So for an IEP student, this will be individualized to their strengths, to their needs. Okay? It means when they first start their reading and their math program, they're going to spend about 30 minutes or so taking a placement test at the grade level and answering some questions. 
and they need to do it correctly as best as they can because then it places them where they are. If you have a gifted student, it's going to allow them to go further. Um, and if the programs are very responsive to that. The core is the most important thing for us, the English and the math. That's what we're spending the majority of our time on in our classrooms at the elementary level anyway. And then the science and social studies, we have sat down with our teachers this week in the, in the elementary, and we said to them, what are you covering in science and social studies between now and Christmas? What are the topics? And we're going to make sure that we provide resources that way your kid in science and social studies is going to be learning the same things that they're going to be here to learn in school. Okay? And we have some we have some options for that. But the goal, the core of this is going to be math and English instruction. Because that's what we're doing in our classrooms anyway. Um, Will the content and delivery models need to be age appropriate and aligned with Ohio curriculum? I agree with you. Um, that's what we have to do. So the reading and math will be at a student level. It will fill in some of those gaps. It is age appropriate. I mean, there's little game system things built into it. It, it was going to look more like a looking program than what the last one did. Um, all the content will be aligned, um, even math or science and social studies. Will the program be user friendly? Um, I have, we have had some demo accounts. We've had some access to some, some accounts in the last couple of days. Um, I put my own third grader on it last night and said, you got to take this reading test. You open it up and it goes to the thing you're supposed to do next. You don't have to click. You don't have to look for it in the corner. When you open up the map, it says, here's your pathway and it, this is your next lesson. There is no drop down menu box like there was before. It is, it is intuitive. It works through. We will show you before we're done. We're going to show you a look at what the system looks like. Okay. We want to blend the paper, pencil, and online work. We agree with you. Okay? We absolutely agree with you. We don't want kids on the computer that long. We're going to provide you with options for workbooks and some things that are outside of that. So kindergarten, you can't learn how to write letters unless you're writing letters. So we are going to print um, handwriting things. It's called Zanger Closer. It's what we're using in our buildings. It's handwriting development. There's a packet. It will have that packet. They can work on it daily. It is writing letters and forming letters and numbers. Um, first grade through fifth grade, um, they will have six daily traits. It's a writing workbook. It's spelling, it's words. It's, there are six daily traits that, that is a writing workbook. It's paper, pencil. They don't have to be on a computer for you at all. So I will look for that. Ascend Math has built in study guides. We ask very bluntly do your study guides or worksheets match what's in the system? Absolutely. And yes, Mr. Sears, let me show you how it goes to Google Classroom or Google Docs. And it easily opens up and you can write on it. You don't have to print it off if you don't want, it, or you can print it off. Um, it is there. If it's a worksheet, it will open up in the other program and easily be used. That is not the case with our current program. We know that. Okay. Um, and then how will things be submitted and graded? And this is a big deal. Okay. This is a big deal. I need you to hear me on this. There will not be submissions to us like you have to do now. You take a picture of it and you send the picture. And I don't know where to post it and I don't know what to do. This is going to be paced at the student level. And so your third grader, I'm going to use an example because I have a third grader. My third grader, he logged in and he's struggling in math. And he goes back to a first grade, some first grade concepts. Okay, they're going to build on those concepts to get him stronger in that area that he needs strength, which is really good for IEP students and for any student. Okay. But it's really hard for us to assign a third grade math grade when they're doing things back here. Um, we think this is the better model. This is the better educational model, by the way. But you have to understand your child is going to be um, scored or evaluated or whatever on the amount of time they spend in the program and their progress made, and they're not going to get an A or an F score unless they don't do anything. Okay? It is very similar to what we did in the spring in terms of the past sale model. We're going to be working through this and mastering. The computer will not let you go on in those two programs until you master the content. It is a standards-based approach. It is not a grade-based approach. It is a big shift. We understand that. But um, it also checks off some of the um, issues you're having with being able to submit things. Um, the paper pencil packets, 
Um, can be checked at home for accuracy. Obviously, you're looking at writing letters, we're going to spelling words, things like that that are going to be there. Um, but it is not our intention at this point in time to submit the workbook pages to the teacher at this point of the grade. It can be writing practice, it can be skill development, those sort of things. Mind play and ascend. Mind play is reading, ascend is math. Those are the two programs we've selected. They're assessed as they go in the system. And you as a parent, it's very easy to see the progress report. You can just look at them as we do some demonstrations. So you can tell how your kid is doing. How much time do they spend on that activity? What is their score at the end of the, of the, of the um, assignment? Everything starts with a lesson, with practice, with a pretest, and a test. Okay, parents will have access to view those things and progress within the report. And then our case managers, our case managers will be then simply um, reaching out to you, checking on progress, seeing how you're doing, can I help you with something? If you're like, I don't know if my kid's writing okay, let me, let's jump on the Zoom call, or Google me, send me a picture of it, I'll let you know. They become a support and a facilitator to the parents, um, and they're not going to be grading things except for in grades four and five, our writing program that we use in our classrooms is Tenth Circuit has grammar activities throughout. And then there's some writing assignments that we do in the building. And we want to make sure we continue those things. So Tenth Circuit will still be used at those upper grades. Um, thank you. Okay. So I'm going to turn over to Bev and I'm going to navigate here for a second from the computer. But we are working on making this website live soon. Not soon, but like. Not tomorrow soon, okay, but we're working on it. Remember, we're creating something that is going to follow along with what we're doing, but we will have a website for you to go to from our homepage. It will be very easy to find. And when you get in there, if you're a kindergarten kid, you click on the blue kindergarten button and it will tell you what the expectations are and it gives you links to everything. So there'll be a link to Ascend, there'll be a link to Mindplay. And then we're going to provide you with these other materials for you as a parent. This is what we're using in our building that kids are getting practice on. Here's the link to it that helps supplement what's happening. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah, we started working on this on Tuesday, and this is what we think it's going to look like. So, that home screen you first see, you'll click on your grade two. The one caveat about this program that you didn't have before. Lincoln Learning was one click and there it is. Everything there. That was nice. This will be several sites, but once you get to that home page, it'll all be right here. So this is what it might look like. This is a second grade page. They are similar, but there are different expectations as you go higher. You know, 30 minutes a day for a kindergarten or first grade is appropriate. For them, you a little more in fifth grade. So those kind of things. The expectations go up a little bit, but it's going to look like this. Each thing that you see on the far left side, sorry, I have problems left and right. Far left side, mind basics, um, and it's in, those will be live links. So you click on them, it will take you right to the program. Um, those things are that we're using are required. We have used those two programs in this district, so we aren't adopting another as yet unvetted program. We used those last year. Mind play was used in the elementary buildings. Um, I know grades three and four use my play. Grade five used to send math. May I ask a question? You say that it's a minimum of 30 minutes a day, but are they able to do more if they want to? So if they'd like to work ahead or if they get hurt very quickly, they can continue to move forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. I will tell you one thing I think there were two things I know about my play. Um, we had some tech issues with it. It's hard to determine if it was our equipment. Um, their program or our users. So it was one of those three things. So it was a little glitchy sometimes, but not for everybody. Which makes sense. So we will work through those things there. that we have them. That's fixable. Okay, a lot better than what we have right now. Um, the second thing with mind play that happened that I would encourage you is why you want to work with your student before they take that placement test. Read what's on the screen, the directions will be there. My opinion um, is that it placed them in the beginning kind of well. I had a couple of kids, I'm like, there's no way they're reading at that reading level. If that happens, your kid is going to fly through 
the first assignment because they got placed too low. And he said, this is way too easy. We may be able to reset that test. Um, or we can say, yeah, you can go, I think it's a smart. And you go, and then eventually you're going to get their both blocks. The other nice thing about a standards-based program like these are, is there are some things I could do really, really well. So I'm going to fly through those activities. The other parts I'm struggling with, those are going to take me a little while longer. Okay, so that's the nice thing about these kind of programs. So there would be requirement. These programs that are on the left are required programs. Okay, there's going to be a reading log. We want you to log. We want them to read to you. You to read to them. Okay, that's old school, right, Mrs. Arthur? The more you read, the more they're read to, the better your scores are going to be. The things on the right, these are programs that we have in the district now. If you have kids in first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, they've already used some of these programs. So again, these will be links. You'll click on them and you can use them in addition. So maybe you're like, I've done it with minutes of mind play. I'm tired of doing mind play. I want to do something different. No problem. Here are some things you could do. So you want to supplement it. I think my kids could do more, but I want variety. Choose these options. Okay. I have in grades. Well, kindergarten through grade three, they're called a high, ODE is High Department of Education Diagnostics. Partly from a teacher background, partly from an educator standpoint, I always want to know where my where's my kids stand? Where are they supposed to be? Are they going to be online? These are state diagnostics that you can give. This is what the state would expect your child to be able to do. And you have access to those. You give them maybe you want to try it, give them a test, give them a diagnostic, and there's an answer key. And so you can see, oh, they're, they're right on track. We're doing great. Um, so that's those diagnostics are there as well. Give me a flip. Um, so the one thing I just want to say about mind play, mind play is a um, mind play is a reading instructor. There is a if your child falls below the grade level. And there's a tutor that comes alongside them and works with them as well. And that's something that's paid for in the system. So um, it is really good, but it is it's using a uh, program called Orton Gillingham. Um, it is a reading it is a reading program. It's a really really good research based program. Um, there's a guarantee money back guarantee built into MindPlay. Thirty minutes a day, you're guaranteed growth, or they give us our money back. Um, and so, but that, but that means is this, it is, a, it's, it's work, it's tutoring, it's work, it's reading. It is not pleasure reading. My own fifth grader loves to read books about sports. Okay. He's going to need to read books about sports. He's going to need to spend time in read works or read theory or tumble books or epic. Those things that you've probably, probably seen your kids use on their computers in the past. That's where they're going to go get the things to read that they enjoy. Um, and, and that's going to be logged down in that reading log time. So mind play is an instructive tool. It is not where they're going to go to read for pleasure. So that's, a, that's important to understand. It, it may be boring. It's work. Um, it's not going to be reading for fun. Okay. The other nice thing about that program is it does have phonics instruction built into it, which is key. We want to learn the reading instruction. It can do a very great without phonics. Um, and even if you're older kids, you may have a third or fourth grader, you see, they're doing a phonics lesson. You're like, what the heck? If they're struggling with reading, research shows they're missing some phonetic pieces. So it's going to recognize that, assess that, and take them back and show them those phonetic skills they're missing. In science and social studies, we already have a program for kindergarten through second grade that was through Beaver Creek uh, Grant, and it's called Science for Us. So they're interactive um, science experiments and activities that they can do. So we're asking they participate in one or two of those a week. Um, at, and then uh, grades three through five is a program called Gizmos. Same idea. Um, the nice thing you might see when we did the demo with Gizmos a few years back, there's an experiment where you can plant a seed and add water and sunlight. And you can change the water, you can change the sunshine, so you can see how those things are affected. The thing I like about it is even if you keep the sunlight and the water the same, you will get marginally different results. So it's not repeating the same activity over and over and over and over again. Real life. You plant three seeds and 
pick up, you can see my horn, I sing my heart, you might get slight differences in that plant. So it was as realistic as I made the computer simulation. The, those things are aligned to what's happening in the classrooms right now. So those science standards, uh, the science topics that they're covering in kindergarten through fifth grade, um, they're doing that like one day a week right now. Um, that's why this is down to one day a week. They're not doing science and social studies every day in every classroom, except for in fifth grade where they transfer and they rotate the classes. So um, I understand that there's a concern like my kids miss now in science and social studies right now. Um, at the younger grades, they're doing those things, sometimes science for a whole quarter, and then social studies the next quarter. Um, they rotate those, that, that is not a part of everyday activity, but we are going to align what we're assigning in those lab programs to what's happening in the classroom. Um, and so that's, uh, those are some interactive pieces online um, for that. So this is not flushed out, but you'll see under the assignment of the class that they're studying at that grade level between now and January. Same with social studies, and we're working with the Green County Public Library. They always curate books for us on that topic. Things that you can go check out, or the online options if you want to do online with it, and you can have directions for that. But already, um, by fourth grade, is asked for certain topics for uh, next month in October. You reached out to Rome at the library, she said, Not a problem, I'll order extra copies for your virtual kids. So when you say fourth grade is doing this, you can get the library and get the exact same book the kids are using in their classroom. First grade already has a collection like that, so she's just going to buff that up so that first graders on grid and virtual have the same resources. I'm going to go out on a limb and hope that Tom Stavis doesn't kill me. I think we could get this done. I'm going to say in a little over a week. We've got the worst of it. You think so? Okay. Absolutely. We're done. Next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Right? Yep. There you go. Next Friday. So, so what I can tell you about that is this. We, um, and we're going to give you a chance to ask some questions here in a second. Okay. Like I said earlier, we have started the process of what POs. In our world, that's the worst thing we have to do. Is to get the approval. With these companies that we are working with, Okay, this didn't just come out of nowhere. I had the idea this weekend, and I said, what if we do this? And I called a person that we've used in the past um, to purchase programming from like this. I said, what do you have for these three things? What can you get for us if we meet on Monday morning? And so we did, and that Monday and that Tuesday with this company, there are schools around Ohio that are having to do the exact same thing. Okay, Girard, it's up on the lake in, in, uh, up in Northeast Ohio. They are doing the exact same thing that we were doing, the exact same programs we did a week ago. And I called their middle, their intermediate principal yesterday, their three through five principal yesterday. I spoke to her on the phone. I said, Tell me, give me some good news, please. Tell me what's going on. She said the biggest issue we had on the first two days was just I know, my login's a little bit messed up, or I can't figure it out once we got them logged in. She said they are rolling the parent complaints. This is working. They, they open it up. It's doing it. And she said, and it, it was, it's a breath of fresh air for our parents and the district. They were using a very similar program to what we were in a week and a half, and they got out and they started the exact same thing. They were up and running with their program within three work days. Um, now, the three work days were their math and their, and their and language arts. Okay, science took a little bit longer for them. They want to make sure. We are trying to put together these science and social studies things. And we're going to have to create some of this stuff. Okay, it's not a package deal. That's what's going to take us a little bit of time. As soon as we have logins for the math and the language and the reading, we'll share it. Okay, get working in it. As soon as we have logins, we're sharing it. So here's here's where we are, and I will I'm going to say this to the board. Um, we have until the 20th of September to get out of Lincoln Learning without paying for it okay so that's sunday right here's my plan and it will happen tomorrow parents it will happen tomorrow i spoke to jacob george this evening before coming he was our special supervisor he is a kindergarten student who is testing the kindergarten reading program as we speak okay he's recording him doing it 
We're going to have videos so you can see what it looks like with a kindergarten kid doing this. I've been recording my third grade son. He got home from school. He didn't come home. He came to my office after school today and I recorded him doing this program this afternoon. My plan is to do this for you. Okay, to show you what these programs look like to give you an option, to give you an idea. Okay, and to get this fleshed out as much as a plan, okay, as we can. Um, and then we'll fill in those things. Um, this, this is working for other schools. These programs work for other schools. We've had good success with them in other schools in, in, in the past with us. So we need to figure out. Um, and we'll look, I'm going to look at. I'm going to click on here in a second. I'm going to show you what it looks like a little bit. But we need to figure out and make a decision if people want to stick with planking learning. If those seven people want to still do that, then we will make that available for them. Okay. If those people want to stay in Lincoln Learning, we can do that. Green County is still purchasing the seats, um, and we can make that available. If you want to switch to this, then you can still do that, obviously. Um, we, sent, we sent the names today of every single kid in kindergarten through fifth grade in the spreadsheet to, to get an account for these programs. So it's out in wherever their program companies are. They're beginning, to, they're beginning to build accounts for us. And, and that's going to take a couple of days. That's why we're hesitant on how long to tell you. They're at their mercy at this point in time and how quickly they do those accounts. Okay? Um, we hear, we heard your complaints. We tried to resolve the issues with Lincoln Learning. It became apparent to me after a parent meeting on Monday night that it wasn't going to be resolved. And it wasn't going to get any better with Lincoln Learning. And so we shifted our focus to finding a, a program that works for people um, that we believe meets the needs of what they're asking for. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you this. And then if there are, I saw one hand there. When I'm pulling this up, do you want to ask or make a statement or ask a question? Uh, it's on hours of instruction, and so our school, um, our our attendance, it's not days by law, it's hours, and we go a lot more hours than what we're required to. Um, other thing I will tell you is we will have these alternate resources and things available. I, we can have that stuff ready to go, like, because they're already there. We already know some of those things, right? I mean, you your child li likely has a login to those accounts already. Um, that is something that if there is a gap, um, then that, that is going to be there. I will tell you that attendance in a virtual learning uh, environment, okay, is not counted by do they log in every day. It is counted by the hours spent on tasks. Does that meet the minimum? It's counted on progress. So that's why we've given a block of when we, when we set things out in our attendance policy, okay, and the other thing would be, this is us not providing you with an option. You're not going to be counted absent, right? If there's a three-day or a four-day gap where there's not a program available, that will not count against the child. Um, okay. I'm going to um, look at, let's see here. So I, this is what would look like if your child, this is a kindergarten unit, okay? Um, Addie uh, logs in. Let me see, make sure that this is sharing the right way, okay, guys? Um, is the correct screen up, Thomas, on the broadcast? Todd, can you see the screen that says Ascend Math on it? Uh, yes, I can. So, okay. So you see this screen here. Okay. So this screen, this is Addie when Addie first logs in. Okay. 
and this is a pattern lesson, we assign kindergartners are not required to take tests. Okay, there will be no diagnostic for a kindergartner in this math program. Their lessons are assigned to them. Or first grade, the lessons are assigned to them. Okay, and so down here at the bottom, there are four, there are four activities in this unit on patterns. The yellow one is, is what we're working on now. You'll see in here also, there's this flashcard math at the top. Um, inside the system, there are number facts and flashcards that's outside of the, the activity. So they just wanna work on their number facts. So what is three plus three, those sort of things. Those are there, it's games, they're quizzing you, you, you to do those things along the way. Um, now let's find some patterns using numbers. Okay. So there is a video. This video is four minutes long. I'm not going to watch the entire video, okay? But this is a pattern involving numbers. And so what's going to happen here is this pattern involving numbers is going to, you know, they're going to say, what is, how many dots are on the screen? What is one more dot? What is one more dot? This is a kindergarten pattern lesson. This is not, you know, meant to be challenging, but it's number sense and facts. Numbers. Let's start with the number zero and work our way up. Now let's find some patterns using this. I tried to skip. Okay. That's right. We you have can, five. Get this is the number five. Where you were. And let's put in one more. That's right. It's the number six. Okay. Very good. So I now get what through this. I'm going to go to an explore. Reminder, this is kindergarten. Okay. Count the aliens. One, two, three, four, five. This one, they're showing us an activity that has workbooks. Here's what I wanna tell you about this. This is practice, okay? You can print this, you can request these. Um, they can go, I'm not going to walk through the Google translation right now, but this little button right here allows you to download and open in Google up here at the top. It's just like every other PDF thing that you have. And once in Google, we will show you the steps. We will provide you with that information if that's what you choose to do, but there also are things available. Okay. And then at the end, I don't need a, okay. At the end, the try it is their way of asking them, do you, how many apples do you have? Can you count for one more? I'm gonna answer it incorrectly. Okay, it's gonna give me an answer at the end. It's gonna tell me how many I missed. It allowed them to get it wrong. It's gonna give feedback immediately. Okay, why did it let me get two of them wrong? It works to 80% completion or percent correct. If you get more than 80%, you've passed that unit. If you get less, it'll make you go back. Okay, and it makes you go back and then work on the activities again until you get to 80%. It, this little thing down here, this has games and stuff built in with the earn coins. I mean, this is, this is kid, right? This is little kid stuff. But the next activity, Okay, continue is going to take you to the next activity. It's, there are no drop downs. Okay. Um, so that, that's a look at the younger grade with that. The older ones, they get flags for accomplishing units. So in this, in this activity, okay, I don't know what grade this is. It doesn't say right here, but start lesson. If you want the study guide, you can. You don't have to. It's there if you want to have a study guide. If you want to open a study guide and put it over in Google and write on it and do the things while the lesson is going on, it's not graded, it's activities, it's things that are there. Um, and then there's a video. During this lesson. Six minutes long, I'm not gonna watch it, okay? They're gonna be at a board, they're gonna work, they're gonna write things out just like the teachers in front of the class doing it. There are opportunities to explore it. Try to make an area of 25. Okay. Make an area of 25. I'm going to do five by five, area of 25. 
Okay, they're going to explore. They want them to change what's going on, make an area of a perimeter of 40. This is exploration. This is practice. This is not an assignment. It's not turned in. Practice is a practice test. This is the same form that the test is going to be. It's not the same questions. It's the same ideas. Okay, these kids, it will take them about an hour to an hour and a half, they said, per, per activity. If they go through the whole video, they do all the practice and all those things. That means a math lesson may take them two days. It's okay. They can stop and they get brought back in exactly where they were the next time. You close out and you log out instead of, instead of um, just closing the browser. It saves where you are. We're gonna go through this more in depth. Okay, I wanna show you some of the things to get reports. Um, there are ways over here to get reports and things like that, uh, progress. Sorry, progress. We'll show you what's working on. We haven't done any of the post assessments, so you have a 0%, but it gives you where your progress is. Parents, this is available at any point in time. Okay. Um, I am actually going to This is what happens. This is a live account. Welcome to the phonics pretest. This is a test about letters, sounds, and spelling rules. Listen carefully to the I'm coach and then spell the word. Some of the words are nonsense words, not okay. real words. Listen to every sound in the word. To hear the I, word again, I to show you click on and the and number or the text box. Next time. You, good luck. Um, Jig. Jig. Some of these may not be real words. It's phonics. The, do you know what sound makes the j at the beginning, the e in the middle, and the g at the end? Okay, we don't use the word jig, but those sounds go together to make a word. Okay, it is going to be doing this sort of thing. It, this is based off of how Owen placed in the test. Okay, his first thing is phonics. Um, and so then it will build. But what I want to show you is it opened up and it went right to what he was supposed to be doing. They didn't have to click on anything. It, it responds to what their lessons are and where they should be. Okay. Um, so we wanted to give you a look. This is not the this is not the complete look because I didn't go through all these things like I will. I'm going to make a video and we'll make it available to you to watch and see if you want to see what it looks like in more in depth. But I wanted to say this evening, we hear you, we've got a plan. We're, we, we, we hear that 80% of our people, 90% of our people want out of LinkedIn Learning and we're providing an option for that. Um, and that's where we are, um, that's where we're headed. So um, are, there, uh, are there questions about this plan that we can clarify first and we can open up to comments? Are there any questions about this? Yes, Andy. So the question is, if they have some of these resources at home, like Prodigy, is that going to be, we have Greenview logins for these things. And the goal is this, that we will provide the Greenview logins where that is appropriate to do so. Because if the child returns, we want that progress to be accounted for them when, that, when they return. So if they're working on Prodigy and they come back, okay, then we don't want them to have to start all over again. Prodigy builds a program for them. Um, that, is, that is the... Um, that's the intent. And so all of these things will come with your, your username is Isaac.Sievers and your password is this when it is a Greenview account. Okay. And then the fly list. So say you went to science program and you're doing it, you know, virtually and all that stuff. But no, if they came up with learning, they're like, no, you can put up things in the novel and have a separate camera. Is that going to be the same concept? Gizmos is completely virtual. Gizmos is completely virtual. So um, now, go back to Bev's analogy from earlier. One of the units we did when we were trained on Gizmos was about planting seeds. And um, if you want to take your child outside and you want to plant seeds, 
then that is on you. It's not a requirement in the program to do so. Yeah, so, so one of the things is we, we will, what I'm saying to you is we will get you what we can at, at the day that it's available. Yes. When those things become available, we'll let you know. Listen, Prodigy is there. Epic is there. Log in. There's going to be options for you for reading. You know, if it's a thing right now that first grade is doing a, um, I think first grade was the one you said earlier where there's already a collection for their social studies activity at the library, we'll let the first grade parents know. Okay. What they're doing in social studies is they're reading content about it. And they're discussing it in class, right? Read the same thing. Have a discussion with your kids about that at home. Okay. Make sure that that's part of what's there. It's off the computer time also. Okay. Well, if you see what we're doing here, 30 minutes a day for kindergartners and math, 30 minutes a day for kindergartners in, in reading, that's an hour of required time in math and in, 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 for a kindergartner a day and then one science lab a week. Everything else can be done offline, okay? That goes up, we're looking at like second and third grade, that being 45 minutes for those two programs. Fourth and fifth being closer to an hour maybe for those two programs. The one thing we didn't say about fifth grade, you have a fifth grade student, um, we are gonna provide the actual fifth grade science book because it is a workbook. It has the instruction, and it has the workbook, it's all in one spot. Mrs. Wydell is telling us this is what we're covering in fifth grade science. So your kid will be doing fifth grade science, the same fifth grade science that the kids in the class are doing. Because, because right, we're petitioning to not have state tests in Ohio in the spring, right? But if they don't, we wanna make sure that kids have every option to be successful in the reading test, which is why we have a reading program. The math test, which is why we have a math program, and in fifth grade science, they gotta have the fifth grade science because that's the first time we test science. Okay, and so there's a blend there, but that's paper pencil also, right? That's not on the computer. We tried to reduce that reliance on the device as much as possible. We know that we're very rural and we have internet issues, okay? So this reduces that. It's now not four hours a day. It's down to an hour and a half to two, depending on how old you are. An hour to two, okay? It will, stuff. it will fill in the gaps. And so that's a very good point. One of the things we've spent time on the first couple of weeks in school is trying to figure out where kids are. They've been taking these sort of placement test type of things and figuring out where their gaps are. And so this gives us a chance to make up maybe what was lost in the spring from March on also, because it's going to go backwards. Okay, your first grader taking a test. If he is struggling in the TCH, right? Like, right, the phonics TCH sound. They're gonna focus on that. And they're gonna work on that to bring him up to grade level. So kids who are on a reading improvement plan in first, second, or third grade, this, this will help address those issues. Um, it will bring them, it will go backwards. Now, that's one of those things is a third grader taking this test may be assigned to second grade work. They can't be upset about that. It's filling in the gaps. They, they can get back to where they're supposed to be, okay? Yes, Amber. So, um, for instance, Jack has, he um, struggled up with writing before we closed in March. Then we get to the program and, you know, the um, these managers check in with us. We're struggling. At what point does either family support reach out and be like, hey, like I don't want him to have so much lost time on struggling that he might yeah. be flagged for an IEP. How does he get flagged? Do we reach out? Yeah, so, so if you feel like your child is struggling and it's not just, I'm not catching the hang of this platform, um, if there's something more there, you know your kids better than anybody else when it comes to what they may be struggling with or if they're doing. I mean, Mr. George, um, in terms of, is the point of contact, 
all of the kids on an IEP still have their same grade level appropriate case manager. So if you're a first grade student on an IEP, you have the first grade case manager as if you're in the building. So if you're on an IEP and you're struggling, that's the point of contact. An IEP team could convene and say, how are we gonna meet this child's needs, okay? Um, the other thing is we, we are adding after school tutoring hours at the elementary, like we have at the middle school and the high school. Um, and so there will be some face-to-face -face if your child is struggling with that sort of thing. You know, one of the things we keep, I keep saying in responses to parents that are asking about my child struggling this thing, you know, we have, a, we have a licensed teacher that can help you with that. And we don't know that unless you let us know or unless you go to those links and things that are there. Um, so the case manager becomes more, much more appropriate to answer that question now because they're not gonna be spending their time grading assignments, okay? Ms. Driscoll, you had your hand raised up earlier, did you? Okay. Other questions about this program or anything? Okay. Um, I'm going to work really hard tomorrow to get this video produced for you so you can see a little bit more of these programs. Because I know that that was one of the things 35% of the people said, I want to see it first. Okay. We've worked hard to try to get some real life examples because a demo site doesn't always give you what, what you need. Um, and so we wanted to make sure we did that. Um, I will communicate that with you as soon as possible. If, if there's somebody who's watching or goes back and watches this later or somebody here and you wanna stay on Lincoln Learning, okay? I'm assuming you're not here because you wanna stay on Lincoln Learning. But if somebody is out there and they want to stay on Lincoln Learning, we, 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 will, we will make that available. Green County Schools will still have a contract to purchase that and they can stay working through it, okay? If this doesn't work for you and you wanna stay on Lincoln Learning, then feel free to do so, we'll, we'll support that. Um, Jane Cross, Deb and I are talking today, Jane Cross will become our Lincoln Learning support person um, and there'll be one point of contact. Um, so that's, uh, board, is there any question about the program, the shift? I think this is the way to go. Um, from everything I've heard about the Lincoln Learning, it's not effective. And um, I've got a little bit of experience with a couple different schools in their virtual program. And there are lots of problems with the virtual program. The science and social studies program that's in the program that my school district is using, where I teach, same thing. It's not aligned with the Ohio standards, and the teachers are frustrated. But they are full of resources like Gizmos, which is a science uh, program that uh, our district has used for years that the teachers love. They like it better than the curriculum. Um, and the the mind play, I'm not familiar with mind play, but I do know we're Gilliam, and that's outstanding material. Um, I think this is gonna be a much, much better option for students than what the Lincoln Learning was. Um, I, I wanna go back to, we, we trusted the support people that we trust with this. I would guarantee you in the last week, I have vetted every single program personally, okay? We felt like this was our best option to be, to be a success for our families and our kids. And it may not be perfectly aligned when you come back or want to come back in January or next year. It may not be, but it's gonna be what your kid needs. It's gonna be based off of their, where they are at in those two programs in math and in English language arts. And at the core level, at the, at the early elementary level, um, we spend the majority of our day in math and language arts. Um, and so uh, that is, um, if, if people choose to stay with Lincoln Learning, we're gonna have to do, go through the science and social studies and make sure that we pull out the things that are not appropriate. That's something Green County is working on. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at with that. So Green County ESC is aware that this is a problem. They know that correct. they have made a poor choice, correct? Correct. We, we have made them very aware. And other schools have, well, I, I mean, be, well. yes, we have all, we've all made them aware, yes. Um, there are 160 kids that will still be using this out of 950 from Beaver Creek. Um, 
So they're going to lose, they're going to lose a lot of business over this. Um, for I will tell you, we've continued to push for answers. We've continued to push for support, and we can we tried to do other things. I mean, I was we were willing to spend money to get the teachers from their program that know it to help fix it, and uh, they were unwilling to provide that to us. And you know, as of yesterday, I got an email um, that was really sort of a nail in the coffin. One of our teachers had asked about um, rubrics for for grading. And uh, they wrote back and said, those assignments don't have rubrics. So the staff members that are gonna be trying to grade the things in Lincoln Learning, there wasn't direction for them on what was um, the case. I don't know where it went wrong with the people vetting the program, I don't. I know where it went wrong for us, and we've been scrambling to try to find a good option. Um, we believe this is a good option for, for you and for us. Yes, ma'am. No. Okay. That's no. So here's the thing, too. If you if you decide um, if you decide that uh, that you're that what you're doing with your child is working and is best for them, and you want to do that and pull them out of this program and do that, just contact me and let me know. If you have not done Lincoln Learning for a week, um, you know that's not going to be counted against you. Here's what here's what I have told people. Okay, they want to know if they're going to get credit for what they've done in Lincoln Learning. Is it going to transfer over? Um, what I can tell you is we've only supposed to be doing math and English for the last 10 days, eight days. They're going to have the ability to test out of those things when they get into the system. So if they've learned it, if they've learned it, they're not going to be taught the same thing again. Okay. The assessment at the beginning will give them, you know, my, my kid going to get credit for it. The grade's not going to transfer. Remember, we're talking about not having the grades, right? If they're failing over in Lincoln Learning, the grade's not transferring. Okay. Um, and so what we're looking at here is they have the ability to get credit for what they already know. Um, I, I, I called and run this by a couple of parents that I know that are in this system over the phone, some on both ends of the spectrum, right? Students are an IEP, students in the gifted program and students, you know, at a grade level. This will be something for the kids that are struggling. It will be something for the kids that are just right on track. And it will have the ability to extend and, and be further for those kids that are excelling. They're going to be able to move on um, and, and, and do that. Yes, ma'am. So sixth grade and up is not changing from Edmentum. Okay. The program from sixth grade and up, um, we, we have uh, better support from them. They're answering questions. Um, it's working in, in, in multiple, most places. Um, I would tell you statewide, that's the program that most people are using and they're getting rid of other ones. Is that program aligned with the science? It is, it is absolutely aligned with all of the standards. Um, even the, um, you know, even the elective courses, um, we had a couple of glitches with that where we assigned kids to a seventh grade personal finance class. Um, that was actually a high school level personal finance class and not the required seventh grade personal finance class. So we pulled them out of that, right? We, we don't know by looking at it until we know. And we've adjusted some of those things. Um, so uh, the other thing I would tell you, and I have, I have lists of people um, in the last couple of days, I tried to respond to emails last night of some folks that had been waiting for a couple of days. I need you to know that this was my sole priority for a few days, this and our Tuesday incident at the elementary school. Um, and so this took priority. Um, my goal before I go to bed tonight, if I haven't responded to you, you're getting an email tonight. I promise you, okay? And if you have individual circumstances that you need to address with me, we will handle those things on a personal basis, okay? Um, 
And, and this isn't the place to do that. I, I understand that, right? Your personal business is your personal business. Um, I will respond to the emails if I haven't responded to them yet. And you feel free to reach out to me and we will handle those things on a case-by-case -case basis based off of circumstances that arise, okay? We're trying to provide you with an option. We know that many people chose this option for, you chose it for a variety of reasons. And we wanna make sure it's a good option for you. Um, I'm committed to doing that this evening. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So is returning to the first That'll be discussed on a case by case basis based on circumstances. So here's the thing that we would tell you. Um, I'm going to be blunt with you with our issues with this. Okay. We have grade levels that don't have capacity because we still haven't received um, the desks that we ordered in June. We don't have a place to put them. Okay. We have um, some issues with things like that that we have to address on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you know, and it's based on, we understand um, that personal situations change from time to time. Um, we're not opening up a window for a mass return. We're gonna handle those things as you request those. Our goal is to try to provide you, if you wanted to stay in that, and we provide you with an option to stay that wasn't Lincoln Learning, okay? And as a five-year-old, we're trying to get them off the computer as much as possible. Right. Right. And, and I understand that. I, I, so um, if you're one of those people I haven't responded to, I will. If you haven't reached out to me or you need to uh, set up a time to do that, then contact me. Okay. I would just like to thank you and Beth and Jacob George and Thomas for all your hard work. I teach at Miami Trace and we have a nightmare as well with our virtual program and teachers crazy and parents crazy and students crazy trying to figure it out. And it's just not an easy course, but I know that, that these people have worked very, very hard to make sure that we have the very best option for our kids to and I'm grateful for that. So I want to thank you. I Obviously, we're all in uproar, and the fact that this is an option, obviously, you're listening. We appreciate. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. Yeah. Our goal is not to force you to stay in something that's not working. Okay. Um, and I think it's really important as a district that we we acknowledge when something's not working and we adjust course. Um, and and this is going to be work. Um, it's going to be work, and it has been. But it's the right thing to do for kids, and and we're going to make that we're going to make that work possible. Um, so that's um, it's not what we signed up for when we started this, right? Our our it's not what you signed up for when you started this either. Okay, my expectation is I would spend my time doing contact tracing and COVID cases in the building, and I wouldn't have to worry about this because it was handled. And that's obviously not the case. Um, this has been all we've done for two weeks. Um, and, and, I, and I appreciate those of you who have waited several days for responses. Um, I appreciate that. And, and we, I will work to get you a response this evening before we're done. Okay. So, so what I can tell you is this, we, we discussed last week as an administrative team that we're, we're gonna set a date um, in, in November that if parents want to choose to send their kids back to school at the semester, that way we have the month um, of the end of November and December to plan for what that may look like. It really depends on how many people want to come back. I'm gonna talk with this in for a second. It really depends on what that number looks like. Um, if, if it is all 363 kids or whatever it is that's doing online learning right now, that will impact how many, that will impact how we run school. Um, if those guidelines are still in effect and we still have to do the social distancing, that is not feasible um, with the full student, old student body. So, um, 
you know, there are reasons that schools opened at 50% capacity or things. So we would have to look at how many kids in each grade level um, choose to come back. Um, how many kids would, um, you know, we, I don't have a phase in plan for you because I don't know what the scope of that is, but I will tell you that, that we will publish a date. That date is, I think at this point in time, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, so that November 22nd, I think was, that's a number that's stuck in my head for some reason, or 25th, one of those two, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, that will be very clear. That's at the semester time. Um, that was our plan uh, from the beginning that would give us a chance to respond because it may be this. Well, and, that, and I will tell you that, and, and, but we didn't know how many kids were gonna come until August the 1st or 10th. So we, I, I will give you the example for the high school. And I, this is one that I can tell you that, that works. We had to add a third lunch because of the requirement for the high school, okay? The cafeteria that you're sitting in right now, we only, in normal years, we only use two tables at a time per grade level. And then the other two tables, the grade levels overlapped. So for us, we had to add time in every lunch period. So we, we completely changed how long class periods are and when the bells ring in all of our buildings because, because we had to plan it around that. So we, we made a plan to, to deal with that. But if we have a large increase come back in, for example, we may have to go to four lunches at the high school. We're not planning now for four lunches at the high school because we only need three. But if that number changes drastically, then we would we need to give ourselves a time to make that change. So um, I, I hear what you're saying in terms of why don't we have a plan for 100% attendance? Um, but but we planned for what we had at the time, um, and we we have to we'll have to adjust um, if that you know if we we have the same number of kids we normally do, we go back to our you know old schedule. Um, if the guidelines, if those things are any different by that point in time. Or we maybe have to have you know more lunches or less time in passing periods. We we will adjust when we know. Um, but you know the last time we made this decision, we had less than a month to make it, um, just based off of was school even going to open up. And so this at least gives us four weeks before Christmas break, and then the two weeks week and a half after, you know Christmas there to to make those adjustments. Um, Okay, I, I will take that back and we can, I, will, I can address that. Um. It's more than just, I'm sorry to interrupt, it's more than just moving in another desk. Because the so so I'll, 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 I'll address desks. I mean, desk, that's a very valid question. I said that without any context. So, so here's what happened. Um, first grade, second grade, or kindergarten, first grade, and two classes in the fourth grade, they had tables. The tables were like four feet wide, and in the normal years, kids sat right beside each other at a table. Um, with the requirement to have social distancing of at least three, but preferably six, we can't have them at a four-foot table. And so we ordered desks in order to remove the tables from the classrooms. When the desks didn't show up on August the 13th like they were supposed to, we we took desks from all of the other classrooms. So a classroom that had maybe four desks that weren't being used were all taken to a classroom that didn't have desks. And so we have, we have, re we have removed any extra desk, specifically at the elementary school, any extra desk to outfit the rooms that did have tables. The tables are supposed, the desks are supposed to be delivered on September the 18th. And that's tomorrow. Um, I received word today that the chairs are coming and the plexiglass dividers for the middle school science labs, and we still have no word on when the desks are showing up. 
now two and a half months after they were ordered with a four week delivery time. Um, so when I say there aren't desks, that's the reason I say there aren't desks. Like we took every available desk and we put them in rooms that had tables. Um, we have two kindergarten classrooms right now that had a six foot table that used to have five people sitting around it. This kindergarten is very collaborative and they sit around the table together. Um, right now there are two kids, one on that end of the table and one on this end of the table, um, four feet apart from each other, where the, a table that used to have five people. So that, that's what we said when we talked about furniture. Now, we'll have to address that issue, um, but it's not simply just moving it in. It, the, the logistics of, maybe, of cafeteria have to be addressed. The logistics of where kids go in the morning before school, um, all of those things changed as a result of our requirements. And, um, and, and so those are things that we are constantly having to adjust as those rules and those guidelines change and address. Um, so I mean, I threw that out there earlier and I understand why, that's why we don't have desks. Um, so I will tell you in talking with Yellow, and I, I spoke with Yellow Springs superintendent back in August when we figured out our desk work coming in, I said, you're not going to school for the first semester. Can we take your desks? Contact her, I'll drive there with a trailer and pick them up, can I have them? And she said, that's the reason they canceled school and went all virtual for a whole semester. Their entire elementary was tables. And so they, they could not use the furniture they had in order, in order to comply with the social distancing requirements. Um, and, and so those are things we have to respond to. Um, and that's the thing we have to consider. So. I do have one thing I want to say about this issue that we have going on. Um, a lot of parents have chosen to go, you know, we have this virtual population now. We are running two different school systems. We have in-person and virtual. We've been in school for three weeks. Virtual has not been working well. It certainly seems like sending your kids back in person was the right choice. But none of us have a crystal ball. When, I, when we closed down in March, I thought I have to get my people through May. I thought we'll be back to normal in August. Well, August wasn't normal. September isn't normal. So right now, virtual is struggling, but we don't know what's gonna happen with our in-person classes for the next three months or the next six months. So that is certainly something to consider. Why this might be difficult right now, why you might be thinking, ooh, maybe I made a mistake. Give it three months, give it the semester before we don't, I can't tell you right now what I think the better option is because. Yeah, so, so I, that's just something that I think, you, you know, I know you're struggling, I know this is difficult, but we don't have the crystal ball to know what the best option is. It would be great if we could have 100% attendance in January. We don't know if that's going to be possible. We don't know if we're going to have 0% attendance in January. So, so we're working on a lot of different options um, and trying to plan for a lot of different scenarios. And that is something that's, eh, there's, there's never been a virtual and in-person option for most school districts. So, so this is something that's new everywhere all over the state. Um, so, so like I said, I know you're struggling right now. I know it seems like it's, you, you may have made the wrong choice, but we don't know what that, you know, what decision is going to be best in the long run. Is there, is there any other topic? Yes, ma'am. It is happening. You don't have to go back to Lincoln ever again. Correct. The purchase order is in, is in place. Lincoln Learning, if you don't want to do it, is gone. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Well, okay. Thank you. Is there anything else not related to virtual learning that somebody wanted to speak on this evening? The public participation. Yes, ma'am.
Um, it, the other day when we, we, we found out that we had the positive case of, of, of an individual at elementary school, you know, Mr. Hayes and I were talking and he was very, you know, like, what are we gonna do? And I said, we're prepared for this. We spent all, we spent all summer long in these meetings for this. You take this list, I take this list, we've got it. Um, and I, so I know that it feels like sometimes we don't have a plan. I promise we do. Um, and within you know, three hours, we had contacted the health department, we had things out and we had everybody contacted. Um, that's, uh, we will, I will get you, okay? I understand you're asking what, we'll work on what happens if nobody comes back in January, okay? We have a plan if nobody comes back to school in January. Um, we have a plan if everybody comes back to school in January. We'll have to change what school looks like if everybody comes back in January. I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know now. Um, it will have to be different um, if the same guidelines are in place um, because we introduce all of those people back into the building um, that now changes how many kids we can have in the cafeteria and those sort of things. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. So do we have to do invitation for public participation? We just offered it to them. Yeah. Is there anybody else that wanted to address the board? So that's number four on our agenda. I have a list of five people that signed up. Is there anyone that has anything else to add? Um, okay, item number five, the treasurer's report. Number one, approve the minutes from the regular board meeting August 20th, 2020. Number two, approve the office financial reports. Number three, approve the following activity budget and purpose statements for fiscal year 2021. The middle school principal fund, middle school staff support, high school principal fund, high school staff support, student council high school. Um, number four, excuse me, approve the following student payment and little transportation to Legacy Christian Academy for 2021. Joshua Smith, Lena Smith, Micah Smith, Jacob Leach, and Catherine Leach. B, Legacy Christian Academy, 2019 and 2020, Liam Topanen, and C, for St. Bridget, 2020 to 2021, Olivia Deskins, Clayton Allardine, and Alyssa Miller. Do I have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Do you have anything you want to talk about? Um, just one thing on there that I, I did want to point out. The, the reason that we have the 1920 Legacy Christian student is um, we rely on these schools to send us their list of our students that are attending. Um, they don't always give us the full list. So um, we try to, you know, if, if we have the previous year, we, we try to ask them, you know, are you sure you don't have this student still? And they may say, oh yeah, we forgot. Um, but occasionally a parent reaches out to us and says, I heard from so-and-so that um, they got some, some money in lieu of transportation. Is there any way that I can get that? And that, that's why we have the one that's um, from a previous year. Um, are there any other questions about the treasurer's report? All right. Uh, Teresa Wallace? Yes. Suzanne Arthur? Yes. Angela Reagan? Yes. Todd Ireland? Yes. Scott Powers? Yeah. Motion passed, five to zero. Uh, item number six, new business. Approve the waiver to the requirement to provide career technical education in grades seven and eight for 2020-2021 school year as allowed by section 3313.90. Um, this is a, a, a statutory requirement. We offer career technical education options at the middle school. We offer engineering, we offer um, biomed um, type of courses. What we do not offer is a pathway. We don't offer something that starts in seventh grade and eighth grade and then goes to the, um, and goes to the high school. So it has to be a pathway in order to be approved here. Um, so we do offer career tech courses, but we don't offer a pathway. And so we have to fill out this waiver every year. Scott Powers? Yeah. Teresa Wallace? Yes. Suzanne Arthur? Yes. Angela Reagan? Yes. Todd Ireland? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Okay, item number seven, personnel. I will apologize in advance if I slur some of your names. Um, 
Number one for the resignation of Lindsay McLean, uh, teacher effective August 21st of 2020. Number two, approve the following substitute teachers for 2021, I'm sorry, 2020-2021 school year, um, database and Lee Armitage. Number three, approve the following classified substitutes for 2020-2021, secretary Casey Payton and Carlina Meinstel, building assistant and bus aid Casey Payton, cooks Casey Payton and Carlina Meinstel, Custodian Scott Hudson and also Kimmy Crown was added in an amendment. Uh, number four, approve the following supplemental contracts for 2020 2021 school year. Denise Kennedy, girls soccer assistant. Tommy Lowe, boys soccer assistant. Number five, approve the following case managers assigned to virtual learning students paid at the instructional monitor rate as defined in the GEA negotiated agreement. Martha Rector, Leah Godlev, Marie Gill. Samantha Bennett, Justin Evans, Julia Moore, Julie Moore, Kylie Best, Anita Mays, Jane Cross, Lori Boland, Don Wamble, Carolyn Jones, Jake Williams, Sarah Juhon, Jimmy Hoffman, Teresa Hoyle, Laura Bowersox, Chase Hell, Paul Thompson, Emily Sievers, Daniel Fosterman, and Jane Cross. Number six was added. It's to approve the following supplemental positions for the 2021 school year. We have A through T. These are all um, people who are going to be helping as advisors and directors for the play, for band, for concert. Um, number seven is approve the following unpaid advisor positions for 2021. And that is Debbie Clark for Soda Club and Doug Wickline as the F3 advisor. Number eight, approve the following as needed site positions for 2020, 2021. And that is Saturday School Monitor, Brittany DeWitt, Beth Arthur, Chase Hell, and Brenda Willett. Home Instruction is Tracy Geringer, Tom Burr, Paul Thompson, Robin Sweet, Brittany DeWitt, and Parking Lot Monitor is Brenda Willett. That's it. Okay. All second. Do we have any questions, concerns, discussion? Um, I just want to say if there's anybody out there listening and you want to be a sub cook or sub custodian, we need you desperately. You can fill out your application online. We are always hiring sub cooks, sub custodians, or if you can drive a bus, um, that is another position that we are desperate for. Desperate, desperate for bus drivers. Desperate for bus drivers. If you have a CDL and you like kids, come on down. <laughs> and if you're a good driver, preferably. preferably. <laughs> Preferably I hope the drive. CDL covers that, but yeah. Um, Scott Any? Powers? Yeah. Teresa Wallace? Yes. Suzanne Arthur? Yes. Angela Reagan? Yes. Todd Ireland? Yes. Motion passed, five to zero. Okay, item number eight, a motion for adjournment. I'll second. All right. Scott Powers? Yeah. Teresa Wallace? Yes. Suzanne Arthur? Yes. Angela Reagan? Yes. Todd Ireland? Yes. Motion passes five to zero. We are adjourned at 828.